And welcome back to the vlog. Hi guys, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Christina Yao and I'm a rising junior at Duke University studying stats, CS, and entrepreneurship. A few days ago, I posted on my Instagram story if any of you guys in the class of 2026 or people who are applying had any questions about Duke and you guys sent a ton of really great questions. So today I'm gonna to be answering your questions about Duke um, and hopefully sharing some of my experiences and advice along the way. Let's get into it. So the first question is how to get into Duke. I feel like I've been asked this question so many times and the answer I can give is pretty generic. There's no specific formula, but I think decent grades, good leadership, a good essay, like good why Duke, good common app, really showcasing yourself um, and showing that you've pushed yourself and challenged yourself throughout high school is really um, the key to getting in any top school. I think there's so many other factors that play into it. Um, I actually posted a video where I interviewed a lot of people about um, their stats, extracurriculars, and how they think they got into Duke. So I'll put it somewhere up here. For me personally, I think I definitely had good grades, um, had leadership, did activities that I was passionate about and really could talk a lot about. I think I had decent essays. And I think just overall my application showed that I was someone who works hard, someone who has big goals and ambitions, and someone who works towards them. Okay, the second question I was asked is how to survive the social scene at Duke? So I think this is a really interesting question because um, the social scene at Duke might be shifting this year on. So what the social scene was mainly surrounded by um, in my freshman and sophomore year was Greek life, so frats and sororities, and then SLGs, selective living groups, and then independents, so people who weren't affiliated with either, and I would say it was a pretty equal split between all of those. Plenty of friends who are in Greek life, and a lot of their social scene is surrounded by that, for example, um, frat parties or um, sorority formals and all of that. Personally, wasn't very involved. I think I've only been to like one or two frat parties, um, and it's fun if you enjoy that scene. Um, if you don't, there are definitely other alternatives. Personally, I'm in two SLGs called Selective Living Groups. I'm in Brownstone as well as The Cube, um, which is more of an entrepreneurship-focused SLG. Basically, like another smaller community within do co-ed, and usually there's some sort of interest attached to it, and it's very chill vibes, great people, just hang out. You also have mixers, also have social, and I think that definitely helped me make friends and help get to know more people at Duke. And then there are the independents who aren't affiliated with both. I have friends who are also independent as well and they're completely fine. There are so many avenues in which you can make friends through clubs, through class, through other organizations that you really don't need to have the SLGs and Greek life to form your social life around, but it definitely helps to have that. However, I do know that from this year onward, Duke is transforming into a quad X system. First two years, you're gonna be in your freshman dorm and then that's attached to like an upperclassman dorm. So they're trying to kind of merge it into a residential college system and have culture surrounding that, especially because I think they're banning, well, they've already banned um, Greek life officially from campus and they're stopping SLGs from next year forward. So I really don't know how the social scene is gonna change at Duke. My tip is to really just be proactive. I think me going into college, the biggest change I've had to make is that I really have to be the one who reaches out, who is proactive in, in interacting with people and, and really making things usually don't just fall in your lap or, or I've realized that and people are always willing to meet you to make new friends. So if you make the first move, if you reach out the first hand, a lot of people will reciprocate. So I think that is my advice on how to survive the social scene. I have a few questions about tips for freshmen as well as what's life like on East Campus. So I can talk a little bit about East Campus. I think my East Campus experience might have been a little different from regular East Campus experience. So for those of you who don't know, freshmen at Duke live on East Campus. So only freshmen live on East. Um, there's around like 12 dorms, I think. I personally lived in Bell Tower, which I think was one of the best dorms. And yeah, I personally really enjoyed life on East Campus. I really liked that there was the 
kind of like a school and home separation, how um, me and my friends would study a lot on West Campus when we had online classes during freshman year, and then we would go back to East Campus to grab dinner and then kind of chill out for the night, so I really like that separation. I think it really creates a stronger sense of community within the freshmen, it really helps foster more bonds because you know that very likely the people that you walk by in the dining hall or um, waiting at the bus stop are all freshmen so it just makes it easier to make friends I think. Personally I've heard that Marketplace which is the freshman dining hall is a great place to meet people and make friends because during eating times everyone will be there and you can just sit randomly at a table and maybe you'll make a new friend. Fortunately me and the people in my year didn't have that experience because of COVID. Marketplace indoor seating was closed the whole time I was there um, so that was definitely unfortunate and that was something I wish I did have but I'm very excited that you guys will be able to have it. I think there are a lot of tips I can give for freshmen but I think if I had to say one thing is to be proactive. I think being proactive for me means controlling what is inside of your control and really maximizing the resources that you have. So me, um, freshman year, that really meant having to step outside my comfort zone and be someone who would initiate conversation with strangers, who would um, text someone to hang out for the first time that I met in a class. And looking back, I think me in high school would have never done that but I think going to college, you're put into a completely new environment where you really have to survive alone and where you really have to learn to navigate this new life. And I think if you are proactive about reaching out to people, proactive about, proactive about joining organizations, proactive about kind of securing these opportunities and going after these opportunities that you want, your experience will just be so much better because you know that you're putting effort into the process. And I think that was key for me into making my freshman year um, an enjoyable experience. Can you describe the first week and how to make the most of it? Honestly speaking, I'm probably not the best person to answer this question because I actually didn't do my first week of college in person. Um, I did it completely online and it was pretty shitty, to be honest. I just did online classes at like 2 a.m. and didn't really get any of the real college experience. But I will try to speak from what I've heard from friends as well as what I know about this year's kind of new orientation program. So I know that this year um, onwards Duke is basically having mandatory pre-orientation or having a week of orientation where you don't have classes but just attend these programs. And if I had to give advice on how to make the most of it is to Try to meet as many people as possible, but also don't get overwhelmed by the process. This week you're going to um, meet so many people, it's going to be so exciting, your days will be packed with activities. But I think there's also a chance that you can get easily sucked into, oh I've like, made these two really close friends and I'm just going to stick with them and like forming clicks. What I've heard is that a lot of people's orientation week friends don't end up being their like, lifelong friends at Duke. And I don't think that's because you can't form genuine friendships um, during your orientation week. I know some people who do, but I think it's because maybe during that period, people are too overwhelmed and they just try to find like these clicks really quickly um, and they don't end up really having like deep conversations with people and really exploring and meeting as many people as possible. I would say going into your first week to really just keep an open mind to talk to as many people as possible, to feel things out, to see uh, what kind of people you vibe with, to see what kind of experiences to, you like, but also to keep in mind that there's so much time for you to explore and there's so much time for you to figure it out and you don't have to have your whole college life planned out during your freshman year and I think that's really important to keep in mind. It will definitely be a process. Your friends will change, your interests will, will change, what you value in college will change as well. In mind as you go into uh, your orientation week and just try to have as much fun as possible because I really think the people at Duke are really what makes the campus and the culture. The next question is do lots of students work on campus during the semester? Um, and another similar question, on campus jobs and research opportunities. I think quite a lot of students do work on campus during the semester. There are people who are on work study, so I don't exactly know how that works, but I think 
Um, it's like part of their financial aid or something. And I think there's so many different job opportunities. I know people who work as like lab assistants, who work in the mail office. I know people who work at the gym, doing like the gym reception. I think there are a lot of opportunities out there um, for you if you do want to work on campus. I know that there are like two specific platforms where they'll post these opportunities. And I think if you're on a work study program, um, they'll kind of provide you with that guidance as well. So don't worry too much about that. Um, in terms of research opportunities, I know there are so many research opportunities as well. There's so many labs at Duke and so many professors who do research. You definitely can just reach out to people. It might be harder to get research opportunities that way, but if you know a professor from a class or um, have a friend who's worked in a lab, um, some things off the top of my head are Muser. Just like every semester, I think they post a lot of research opportunities, different projects you can work on and you just apply. There is Bass Connections, which a lot of my friends have done as well, um, in which it's like a semester-long project. Tons of just department-specific research opportunities in addition to labs that you can reach out to. So I would say if you want to do research at Duke, so many opportunities to do that. What is your major? So I am a statistical science major with a data science concentration and hopefully pursuing a computer science minor as well and also the innovation and entrepreneurship certificate. I would say there's so many majors out there. I came in as a bio major, switched like five different times before I settled on stats because I just ended up liking the classes the most, but you can figure it out as you go and I wouldn't say to be too stressed about it going in as a freshman. The next question is something I'm very excited about. Is the food at Duke nice? Also, I heard Durham is quite sketchy. Is that true? So to answer the first part of the question, is the food nice? I personally love Duke food. I think the Duke dining hall is probably one of the best dining halls in the nation. People do have mixed opinions about Marketplace, which is a freshman dining hall, but I honestly find it pretty good. You have tons of options and varieties to choose from. You can eat as much food as you want which is great, and their brunch on the weekends is amazing. I literally miss brunch on the weekends as well as the amount of fruit you can get on East Campus. And on West Campus, you get to eat food at Wu, um, also known as the Broadhead Center. The way it operates is that there are a lot of different stalls. So for example, there's like Il Forno, which is a Italian food stall. Um, there's Gyotaku, as well as Ginger and Soy, which are more Asian food stalls. Um, there's Sprout, which is all like vegetarian, vegan food. So there are tons of options. I think the one complaint I would have is that like food is pretty expensive. For example, a typical meal is like 11, 12 food points, which one food point is literally just $1. So you're paying quite a lot for food at Duke, but I would say that I enjoy the food at Duke. It can get a little bit repetitive after a while because there's not as many options, but I would say the quality of food is amazing at Duke. Second part of the question is, I heard Durham is quite sketchy. Is it true? I personally have never felt unsafe in Durham. That being said, I don't go downtown too much because I don't have a car and it's a bit of a ways from West Campus to go downtown. But if you're there when it's bright out, I would say it definitely gives me like small town vibes, but a lot of nice restaurants to go to, nice shops, like a little nice street. And I personally have never felt unsafe, but I think, but I think I also haven't navigated too much of Durham. So uh, I don't think I can comment too much on that. So the next question I got was a very exciting one. It's how do I get into DSP? Thank you, Karthik, for that question. So DSP is a business organization on Duke's campus that I am involved with. I recruited for DSP during my freshman spring and I really truly think it was one of the things that defined my freshman spring experience as well as my, my, as well as set me up on my future career trajectory. So I have a lot to owe to DSP. So during my freshman spring, as you guys know, I was new to Duke. I know that many people decided to rush for this business organization because I was remotely interested in business and exploring the business field. Uh, by some stroke of luck, I got in through the whole recruitment and new member education process, learned a lot about different aspects of business as well as kind of just business professionalism. 
awesome. Most of all, just gained a whole lot of new friends as well as a broader community at Duke. If you guys want to rush DSP, you should definitely look out for that. We run recruitment in the fall and in the spring, and I think definitely during like your first few weeks on campus, you'll hear about it, see about it, um, but you can also check out our website as well as our socials if you want to know more right now. But And it also helped me think a lot about my future and made me realize that the business field and business is something I'm really interested in, and I was able to have a ton of mentors um, from that organization who guided me through the process. So I'm really grateful for that. So broader scale, I think with any organization at Duke, it's important to, I think it's important to spread your wings, look around, um, really don't say no to any opportunity and really see what really clicks. And you can join a ton and then drop a few that you don't really like and really stick with the organizations that you think you can contribute to in the long term, but that you can also gain from. I think really investing yourself in a few communities at Duke is really important. So me personally, I'm involved with DSP. Um, I'm heavily involved with Bo, um, as well as AIV, Asian InterVarsity, as well as some cultural organization like Singapore Students Association, as well as SLG, so Brownstone and The Cube. And those really have defined my Duke experience. My advice for everyone out there is to really, really explore like your first year. And then I think from sophomore year, junior year onwards, really find a few that you're really interested in, passionate about, and commit to those organizations. And then the last question is biggest regret from freshman year. Wow, this is an interesting one. I think I had a really different freshman year experience. I think my first biggest regret is not going in person freshman fall. But that aside, I think another one of my biggest regrets is not reaching out to more people from my classes because our freshman year experience was so different. One of the only ways I met people was through like mutual friends or through connections I already have or really just proactively reaching out to people. For example, Selena, one of my best friends now, um, I like we met because we were both stuck in the bio building and she was in my one in-person class and we became friends. So I think that I would have been able to make more friendships if I reached out to the people who were in my online classes and maybe met some of them in person. I didn't really do that. So maybe I could have met even more people. For you guys, I think just keeping an open mind, being proactive and really not put, putting too much pressure on yourself is is what I would advise to have an enjoyable freshman year experience. Those are basically the gist of all the questions I got for today. I hope that was a helpful video for you guys. I personally am really excited to get back on campus this summer has been nice, but it's been very long and I feel I can't wait to get back on campus, get back to Duke, see my all my friends again and really just kick off junior year. With that, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know if this was helpful at all. And hopefully I'll see some of you guys on campus in the fall. And I would love for you guys to approach me and say hi if you've watched my videos and see me on campus. With that, I hope you guys remember to stay safe, stay healthy, shine on, and I will see you guys in the next one. Night.